Go on. No! Let me go, please. Oh, merciful God, let me go! Let me go, please! I don't want to die! I don't want to die! Let me go! Please! Please! Please let me go! Let me go! Please! Let me go! Let me go! Please! I don't want to die! Please! seized in his cell by armed guards in their stocking feet, snatched from a dream of freedom to be thrust into the waiting embrace of Madame Guillotine. Altogether an unenviable experience, not, however, inevitable. It is related that there have been certain criminals, cutthroats and murderers all, who have by one means or another evaded this chilly fate. Well, the efforts of one such fellow to alter his ordained destiny formed the substance of tonight's story. The location, France. The year, 1875. And the theme, well, you might call it togetherness. The normal association of a body and the head it comes with. You're about to meet three people who enjoy seriously conflicting viewpoints on the subject. <laughs> Here is the condemned man, Robert Lamont, who desires to keep his head while others about him are losing theirs. Enacted for us by Alejandro Ray. His good wife and the chief source from which his present dilemma obtains, Babette, played by Danielle de Metz. And the third figure in this grisly triangle, the estimable and much maligned Monsieur de Paris, public servant par excellence, portrayed by Robert Middleton. This drama may be considered not only as a tribute to the inexorable march of civilization, but also to the unconquerable spirit of convicted murderers. Of course, such practices may soon become things of the past with modern methods of scientific liquidation. Instant death is now available to the masses without fuss, <laughs> and in most cases without undue delay. Pity. The old traditional ways were always so much more quaint. Yes. Give them to Louis. He's being a good friend. Only a few minutes, madame, then you must go. Thank you, monsieur. Oh, Robert, oh, Robert. Oh, I was afraid I was never going to see you again. I was so lonely. There is a cure for loneliness, my darling. But of course I don't need to tell you that, do I? Please. That is in the past. For you, perhaps. For me, it is in the future. In the near future. I'm sorry, Robert. 
I thought when you arranged for me to see you that you'd forgiven me. I apologize for intruding. Am I forgiven? Yes. I never yes. loved him, you know that, don't you? And you know they forced me to testify. It was my oh. luck. That's all. Plain but luck. Any other jury would have dismissed the charge. After all, it was a crime of passion, was it not? If a man finds his wife in the arms of another, what is he to do? You said you'd forgiven me. Forgiving. Forgiving is one thing, my darling. Forgetting another. Robert, you were gambling so much. You were leaving me alone so often. I was convinced you stopped loving me. I was weak. Don't blame yourself. Blame fate. You know what I say. Lucky at cars and lucky at love. My losing streak continues. They're getting ready for a meal now. What do you mean? Come here. Look, Babette. One of these mornings, the guards will sneak in here. Quietly. And take me away. One of these mornings, they take me downstairs. Shave my oh, neck. Please stop it, Robert. Please stop it. I wish I could. But is there anything you can do? No. Alice. What is it, Robert? Tell me. No. Oh, no, I can't. Robert, you are here because of me. I would do anything to help you. Anything? Anything. Robert. No. Do you want to see that happen to me? I have already told you. Very well. Then listen. There is a tradition, an unwritten law, that when the bureau, the headsman, dies, the next man in line is given his freedom. If Monsieur de Paris, the executioner, died on the night before the appointment, there is no time to name his successor. And no hand but his may touch the trigger of the guillotine. You see, Babette? Yes. You want me to commit murder for you? Only as a last resort. If you can detain him otherwise, the method is yours to choose. Well? What is your plan? What is your plan? In the name of the law. Monsieur, the executioner of the High Works is here by order to take possession of the individual named Robert Lamont, condemned to the punishment of death by the Assizes Court of Paris on March 11th, 1875, and to proceed with his execution within the confines of the prison de la Roquette at the established hour of daybreak. And what is the date, monsieur? I don't know the date. It is said only the director and the headsman know. But the truth is, everyone knows. Except the poor devil who's going to get it. Play up to Louis. Do you remember the guard? Find out from him. Find out about the Paris too. His habits. Where he goes to eat. Who his friends are. But be discreet. Do you understand? I bet. It is my only hope. You'll do it for me, won't you? You said you'd do anything. Will you, Babette? Madame? Babette.
Seigneur, monsieur. Merci, non, mademoiselle. As you can see, I already... I already have one. Yes, but it is not nearly as red as mine. It is true, I have seldom seen such color. Uh, amazing. Uh, tell me, mademoiselle, where do you buy your flowers? I do not buy them, monsieur. I raise them myself. Oh, not really. I'm astonished. <laughs> Would you join me? Well. Please. All right. You see this variety? It is only grown in my family. Oh, remarkable. Oh, mademoiselle, would you care for some uh, cognac? Oh, no, no, no. Thank you, monsieur. No. <laughs> I have only one aperitif. I'm afraid gardening is the only vice that interests me. Monsieur could hardly find a more innocent one. Perhaps, but it, it does cause me a bit of embarrassment. See, there are those who look upon me as something of a, an eccentric. But on the other hand, my vice has brought me some recognition. I am regarded as a leading authority on certain pioneers. Oh. Then perhaps Monsieur would like to have some clippings. For this variety? For all. Oh, you are very kind, mademoiselle, <laughs> but they look like prize blooms. Perhaps you should keep the secret. Oh, no, Monsieur, no. You cannot imagine what a pleasure it is to meet someone with a real appreciation of my wares. You are very kind. Oh, no, no, please, a gift. Mademoiselle, I, I do not know how to thank you. Oh, it is nothing, monsieur. The knowledge that my carnations will be blooming in your garden is sufficient, thanks. When would monsieur care to have the clippings? Oh, at your convenience. I shall be happy to call at your home. Oh, do not trouble yourself. I am in the neighborhood quite often. If you live nearby. Oui, in la rue de la Martine. Oh, I should love to see your garden. <laughs> Please believe me, it is a trouble for me. You do me honor. A Thursday morning, perhaps? Uh, I'm afraid I, I have a, a previous engagement. Mm, well, uh, Wednesday afternoon, then. Wednesday, of course. And I must show you my familiars. I believe I am the only gardener in all Paris who has this specimen. And now, mademoiselle, if you will excuse me, I must not be late for dinner. Your wife? <laughs> Much worse, mademoiselle. My housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> mademoiselle. Mademoiselle, one moment. Uh, will you join me, Cognac? Why not? Garçon. Cognac for Mademoiselle. And uh, another one for Monsieur? No, 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 no. Do you know who that uh, gentleman is? He raises flowers. <laughs> he raises flowers, oui, oui, oui. So do his victims. They also raise flowers on their chests. What do you mean? That is Monsieur de Paris. Les bourreaux. The headsmen. The executioner. <laughs> Bang! I tell you, it gave me cold shivers watching you sitting next to him. He seemed so nice, so gentle. Oh, he is. He is so gentle. In fact, it is said he would not willingly hurt a cockroach.
I hope such excellent soil will not be disappointed in my poor offering. I also hope that the offering will accomplish its purpose. What do you mean? To bring a little bit of variety into your life, monsieur. Even such a small thing as a new carnation. Yes, of course. But you're very young to be a philosopher, mademoiselle. I have lived much. And I am always seeking for new experiences, new companions. A restless spirit. Nature's gift to those of tender years. Monsieur's not that old. Not in years, perhaps, but in other ways. I find little joy in those pastimes which amuse ordinary men. You admit, then, that you are not ordinary. I sensed it the first time I looked into your eyes. Mademoiselle, I'm going to tell you something. Something I should have told you at once, but I dreaded the look that would come into your face. This is the faces of all who know me. What is it, monsieur? The truth. You see, I am not what I appear to be, a mere grower of flowers. I am... I am Monsieur de Paris. Le Barreau. I am the executioner. Oh. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You do not shrink from me. You do not run. Run? I am not under sentence, monsieur. And until I am, I don't see why I should fear you. Oh, mademoiselle, I can't tell you how much it means to hear you speak this way. I was afraid it would end our relationship. Oh, poor monsieur. You are poorly treated by the world. You ought to be thanked for doing such an unpleasant job. I am sure you don't enjoy it. Mademoiselle, you are a woman of remarkable understanding. Of course I do not enjoy it. No sane man could. But someone must accept the responsibility of seeing to it that the death sentence is carried out in a completely workmanlike manner. Someone must. Oh, I can look at you and see that you are kind and gentle and sweet. That you could be pleasant to be with. I am sure that we will find somebody someday who will understand. You think so, mademoiselle? You, you really think so? I am sure of it. Uh, perhaps monsieur would care to have dinner with me tonight. I'm not a bad cook. <laughs> mademoiselle could not do anything bad, but... I'm sorry, I must refuse. You see, I have an engagement. Oh, but that is for tomorrow, you told me. I am sure you can spare an evening to someone as lonely as yourself. Mademoiselle, you tempt me more than I can say. I feel the need of companionship. But tonight? Tonight we're having veal for dinner. Oh, uh, this is Madame Leclerc, my housekeeper. May I present Mademoiselle... Babette. Babette. She has brought me the, the cuttings of the most incredible red carnations. <laughs> Monsieur's dinner is almost ready. He can discuss the carnations tomorrow. Uh, my apologies. Please. Another evening. Of course. If monsieur feels like a stroll after dinner, I will be at the Café du Monde. I would be charmed, but you see, my appointment is for an extremely early hour in the morning. You will forgive me. Of course. Oh, what 
What a delicious smell. How thoughtless of me. Please, mademoiselle, do us the honor of remaining for dinner. Are you sure it will please Madame Leclerc? <laughs> Madame Leclerc has not been pleased since the day she attended her husband's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Mm, well. Please. Thank you, monsieur, I will. I do so hate dining alone. Uh, avec plaisir. <laughs> I'm sure you will like this wine, mademoiselle. Bouquet okay, is merveilleux. This is most kind, monsieur. It is our pleasure, mademoiselle. I assure you. Isn't that right, madame? Hmm. Well, who is the lucky one tomorrow? Please, madame, we have a guest. <laughs> I'm sure our guest would appreciate knowing with whom she dines. I am acquainted with the facts regarding Monsieur de Paris, madame. Ah? Oh? Well, then, why all the secrecy? I am sure my profession is not a fit subject for discussion. It is seldom that we have such a, a lovely guest. Your health, mademoiselle. To yours, monsieur. <laughs> I'm sure there aren't men you'd give that toast to him. Continued good health, mademoiselle. And to yours, monsieur. Madame Leclerc, your dinner was magnificent. As long as I please, monsieur. That's all that matters. You are uncomfortable? It's a little bit warm in here. I'm sorry, mademoiselle. What are you trying to do? Do, madame? You know what I mean. You think he's rich. Is that it? Madame, that will be enough. Well, he isn't. He's poor. And what's more, he's old enough to be your father. Madame Leclerc, that will do. My apologies, mademoiselle. She forgets her place in this house. You'll have to remind her. Please, drink a little. You'll feel better. Oh, monsieur, your brandy is excellent. But if you will forgive me, I would prefer a glass of water right now. Of course. They've finally done it. They've granted me my husband's pension. At last they have seen fit to reward his widow. Madame Leclerc, I demand that you apologize to Mademoiselle Babette. Of course, of course. I am sorry now that I didn't start this sweet dough in time. We could have celebrated with pancakes. Ah, oh, no better. You will have them for breakfast in the morning. Oh, madame. What is it, mademoiselle? Do you have a good recipe? My mother could not make dough fit for anything. And I'm afraid I have inherited a talent. <laughs> <laughs> there is more to my pancakes than a recipe, mademoiselle. But if you really want it, come, I will show you. Your pardon, monsieur. This is very important to me. Of course, I understand. <laughs> As you can see, it is rising. This is for the second time. It is not as firm as for rolls, mind. I will roll the dough out thin. Fold it over a few spoons of the apples 
and crimp the edges. Would you mind to hide the proportions out for me? I have such a bad memory. <laughs> Just a moment. Thank you, madam. Thank you, my friend. Easy, my friends. Easy. I won't resist. Tie me up if you wish. Robert Lemont, it is my duty to inform you that your appeal has been refused. Be brave. Why not? It costs no more. Well spoken, monsieur. I commend you. I have brought a priest for your final confession. Father, what a shame to get you up so early in the morning. For nothing. My son. Concerned with the fate of your immortal soul. My immortal soul can take care of itself. I have no interest in it. Monsieur, 
Blasphemy is ill-advised in one who stands so near to his Maker. You seem very sure. Let's see how sure. I bet two thousand francs against you one thousand that I live to see twilight. As a professional gambler, Monsieur Lamont, you should know more than to bet against an absolute certainty. Step, monsieur. speaking. Thank you. You're welcome, monsieur. To your health. Thank you. Good luck to you, monsieur. Monsieur, tell me something. I have heard that it's a tradition, you must say, that when a headsman dies, the next man in line is pardoned. Is that true? Under unusual circumstances, yes. Has it ever happened? Yes, but if that is your hope, you are doomed to disappointment. Why? Well, you see, uh, Monsieur de Paris is an extraordinarily healthy person. He's never been a second late for an appointment. In fact, I have never known him to have so much as a stomach ache. <laughs> prepare the necessary documents. Don't hurry. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. 
shave? <laughs> Go to places. Yes, I will, someday. <clears throat> but you, you will be there to have things all nice and cozy for me. Mm -hmm. Now, hold this. Don't be afraid, monsieur. I'm a lot steadier than I look. <laughs> I haven't lost a client yet. <laughs> monsieur need not worry. The rumor is not true. What rumor? They tell the tale that I draw a line for the headsmen to follow. But it's a lie. <laughs> so many things you hear in this place are lies. <laughs> like saying, I'd let a man have my blade to slit his own throat so he wouldn't have to face the national razor. <laughs> the idea. Bend down. Why? <laughs> if I did that, Monsieur de Paris, he would be out of a job. <laughs> today, mademoiselle. All dressed up to see the sport, huh? This is none of your business, monsieur. Monsieur, would it be possible, do you suppose, for me to gain admittance for the, monsieur, for the execution? Not here, madame. The public gate is on the other side. Oh, but it is so far, and as you can see, my cab has gone. I am sorry, madame. This gate is used only by the bureau, monsieur de Paris. Is he here? No. But you will be. Isn't it time he was here? Such a changeable fellow you are. First you do not believe you will die, then you grow impatient. He's in the courtyard now, testing the machine. What? Without looking, I can assure you that at this very moment, Monsieur de Brie is raising his hand in a signal to his assistants. Ah, Monsieur de Paris, do you are sick? It is just shock. Something I ate. I. Hello, oh, hello. Doucement, doucement. Come, I will help. I will take you to a hospital. Oh. Bon, bon, I take you to a doctor, and I know a good one in the Rue Val. Monsieur, you are a very sick man. That is unimportant. Please, I have an appointment. Take me to La Loquette. Quoi? Take you to the prison? Oui. Monsieur, I know who you are. And I am horrified. I'm repelled by your trade. Still, I am willing to take you in my cab because you are ill and because Francois Trintignant is a decent human being. I will take you to a hospital. I will take you to a doctor. I will take you to your home. But I will not take you to the prison to carry out your bloody filthy work. No! You must, monsieur. You hear me? You must! I have never missed an appointment in my life. I am sorry, monsieur. My conscience will not permit me. It is only a few hundred yards. If God wills you have the strength, you will make it. Please, please. Please, monsieur. Wait, wait. Message from Monsieur de Paris? No, Monsieur, nothing. I do not understand this. There will not be time for a formal test before dawn. And exactly when is dawn, Monsieur? At the official hour of sunrise, as published by the Ministry of Navigation today, Thursday, April the 18th, it falls at precisely 6.30. And that is? Ten minutes from now. Oh, thank you. Man, 
Hadn't you better go home and sleep this one off, huh? Uh, yeah. And it affects me that way too sometimes. A cup of coffee Please. is a... Get me to the prison courtyard. What's that? The courtyard, you fool! There's no... You must understand, Limon, that I personally would like to see every man here redeemed, placed back in society. But it will be a long time before we reach that degree of civilization. You do understand. Monsieur, in the regular course of events, am I not at this moment supposed to be on my way to the guillotine? Yes. Then let us go. I want to take advantage of all my legal rights. Very well, Lemont. If that is what you wish. Tie him up. As soon as we reach the gate, monsieur. No, 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 late. No, I've been late. Let me have that. No, 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 please. No, please. such a friend, one would need no enemies. Let's go. I trust that you are keeping track of the time, monsieur. Yes. talking about that you were fond of me for the first time in my life someone who <laughs> why monsieur i've never seen you before in my life stop her stop her she pushed me Mademoiselle, I will keep my appointment. Where is the doctor? Get the doctor! No, no time now. Get me to the courtyard. Shoot it. 
It is too late. He's dead. I will! 